Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on Thursday the 3rd of March, the first Thursday of Lent. Monday last, the morning prayer Old Testament reading started on the story of Joseph. This continues in the first weeks of Lent. For a change, our parish Lent and daily office switches to the Old Testament reading, following Joseph's story in the book of Genesis. Picking up today where Joseph is sold into slavery. It's a long saga telling of God's providence, reversing the fortunes of one man, changing the destiny of his Israelite kinsmen. Joseph is commended as a role model in practical wisdom, working to bless others, a suitable lesson for our Lenten journey. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment give us life. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 77 a psalm for coping through prayer with a sleepless, worried night. I cry aloud to God, to God that he may hear me. In the day of my trouble I seek the Lord. In the night my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I think of God and I moan. I meditate and my spirit faints. You keep my eyelids from closing. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. I commune with my heart in the night. I meditate and search my spirit. Will the Lord spurn for ever and never again be favourable? Has his steadfast love ceased for ever? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? And I say it is my grief that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the peoples. With your strong arm you redeemed your people the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God our Shepherd, you led us and saved us in times of old. Do not forget your people in their troubles, but raise up your power to sustain the poor and helpless. For the honour of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 39 Now Joseph was taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, a captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. He was in the house of his Egyptian master, his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. So Joseph found favour in his sight, and attended him. He made him overseer over his house, and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and with him there he had no concern for anything but the food that he ate. Now Joseph was handsome and good-looking, and after a time his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me! But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, with me here my master has no concern about anything in the house, he has put everything that he has in my hand. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept anything back from me 
except yourself, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And although she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not consent to lie beside her or to be with her. One day, however, when he went into the house to do his work, and while no one else was in the house, she caught hold of his garment, saying, Lie with me! But he left his garment in her hand, and fled, and ran outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand, and had fled outside, she called out to members of her household, and said to them, See, my husband has brought among us a Hebrew to insult us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice, and when he heard me raise my voice and cry out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Then she kept his garment by her until his master came home, and she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you have brought among us came in to me to insult me, but as soon as I raised my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. When his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, saying, This is the way your servant treated me, he became enraged. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. He remained there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. He gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. The chief jailer committed to Joseph's care all the prisoners who were in the prison. And whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The chief jailer paid no heed to anything that was in Joseph's care, because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jacob's eleventh and Rachel's firstborn son, Joseph, was a favourite child, younger than his brother's. His gift of a fancy coat and ambitious dreams aroused jealousy and resentment towards him, which is how he ends up being trafficked in slavery. He's bought by Potiphar, a ranking officer of the Egyptian royal guard. Rather than seeing this as his first stroke of luck, the storyteller sees it as divine providence. Joseph's family are nomads so he's a total newcomer to highly organized Egyptian urban society. He wasn't literate, but numeracy, powers of observation, and survival skills for times of drought and famine, he was able to put to good use. Experience that enabled nomads to live successful, productive lives in a harsh environment. Joseph is adaptable, a quick learner, observing and adopting the customs and culture of an Egyptian military household, fitting in, making himself useful, being reliable. For this reason he's a foreigner who gains trust and respect because he integrates. He learns the language, endears himself to everyone including his master, and he always plays by the rules, imitating what all good soldiers should do. The household flourishes under Joseph's stewardship. All are relaxed and happy, all, that is, except one, his master's wife. Is her husband paying her enough attention, we wonder? Soldiers, like policemen, give so much of themselves to their work that their wives and partners get neglected, feel resentful, and in this story, tempted by a good-looking, immaculately behaved foreigner, trusted to take care of her every need. She doesn't try to seduce him, but orders him to cheat on his master with her. She's reversing roles here. It's usually a male owner who forces their attention on a female slave. Joseph refuses vehemently to play her game, tries to reason with her that he's not the man to betray trust placed in him. She's undeterred, pursues him around the house, then in anger at being rejected, if not preached at, denounces him with lies to get her revenge. Potiphar is angry and has Joseph arrested and detained with all the king's prisoners. A high-status locker. The master might have killed Joseph out of rage, or have him sent to rot away in the worst dungeon, but he doesn't. 
It makes you wonder, did the master know his wife had a wandering eye? Or was this kind of behaviour by bored army wives not unusual? Is there an element of giving Joseph benefit of the doubt here? Who was Potiphar to believe? His trusted servant or his missus? By the way, his name, Potiphar, means one whom Ra, the sun god, gave. A providential person whose choice of prison proves providential for Joseph. He soon adapts to his new circumstances and wins the trust of jailers and inmates alike. His fortunes change time and time again, but not the character of the man himself. There's a lesson here for each of us, don't you think? To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. During his life on earth, Christ offered up prayer aloud and in silent tears to the one who had power to save him. Let us also raise our hearts to God in prayer. For reconciliation between all nations, and especially at this time between Russia and the Ukraine, that all leaders may know the perfect law of the Lord, a rule to be trusted, giving wisdom and joy, light and life. Lord, have mercy. For those who live in poverty, that they may know the immeasurable riches of the Lord, who is full of grace and goodness. Lord, have mercy. For those caught up in political conflicts or military action, that the leaders of the nations and all people everywhere will be illuminated by the light of Christ and seek peace and reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. For this community of faith, that through humble service and a pure heart, we may preach Christ crucified, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Christ have mercy. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, to the mercy and protection of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God our Father, in your love and goodness you have taught us to come closer to you in penitence, with prayer, fasting and generosity. Accept our Lent and discipline. And when we fail by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us and keep us from all evil and lead us to life everlasting. Amen.